followed the Lord, my God. Now, as you can see, the Lord has kept me alive yes. and well as his promise. Excuse me. For all of these 45 years since Moses made this promise. Tap somebody, tell them God kept me all this time. I'm sorry. in the wilderness. Today I am 85 years old. I am as strong now as I was when Moses sent me on that journey. And I can still fight <laughs> as well as I could then. So give me the hill country that the Lord promised me. You will remember that as scouts we found the descendants of Anak living there in great walled towns. The descendants of Anak are giants. Mm -hmm. But if the Lord is with me, I will drive them out of the land, just as the Lord said. So Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephthah, and gave Hebron to him as his portion of land. Come on, let's say amen to the reading of his word. In the book of Deuteronomy, God lets Moses know that he would not be going into the promised land. And he also tells him who his successor would be. He lets him know that Joshua would succeed him in leadership. And Moses charges Joshua and tells him, but you got to be encouraged. Because the same way that God has been with me, he's going to be with you. But most importantly, uh, Moses wanted Joshua to know that God had already endorsed him. Oh my. He had already endorsed him. Uh, it's interesting because in the secular sense, when we think of an endorsement, uh, those of us who are sports enthusiasts, we would know that an endorsement is what you get paid to wear a brand. You don't even, you don't even have to like the brand, but you got to wear it because they're paying you to wear it. And, and normally the endorsement is bigger than the salary. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, and so, but with endorsements, endorsements are indicative of uh, popularity, uh, the ability to bring a crowd into an arena. Uh, it is. Uh, based on their gift or talent or ability. Um, in other words, you gotta prove yourself first, then you get the endorsement. But in the kingdom of God, God endorses us before we do anything. <laughs> Scripture would tell us that when Jesus was baptized by his brother cousin, uh, his cousin uh, John, mm -hmm. the Bible says that there was a voice, yes. God the Father, the voice spoke and said, this is my beloved son yes. in whom I'm well pleased. Now you do know that Jesus had not began his earthly ministry yet. Right. He had raised one dead person. He hasn't opened, he hadn't opened up one blinded eye. He hadn't unstopped any deaf ears. But God said before he does anything, I'm pleased with him. My shikoda. I need you to understand that in the kingdom of God, hallelujah, before you even do anything, God lets people know that they are the apple of my eye. 
is not shy. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them God is pleased with you. He's pleased. He's pleased. He has endorsed you. He has endorsed you. So the text is interesting because when we come into the text, we are listening to a conversation between two old friends. Joshua, who is now a man, the man in leadership, and Caleb, who was one of the spies that went out with him to survey the land before they walked into their promise. And, and, and so now they're reflecting on what Moses had said to them. And they begin to talk about the 40 days and 40 nights that they had to spy out the land. Uh, they witnessed the kinds of people that lived there. They witnessed the kinds of houses they would live in. And they even brought back uh, some produce from the grounds of the promised land. Thank you, Lord. And, but, but now in their conversation, uh, they begin to, to express that they were the only two that came back with a positive report. The other ten came back saying that it was impossible to do what God had already told them they could do. And that unbelief began to spread throughout the people of Israel. So much so till the people were tormented and paralyzed and full of fear. Hallelujah. And that fear caused them not to believe God. Now the problem is, because of their unbelief, they were penalized. And the penalty was that for every day that the men went out to spy the land, the people would end up wandering in the wilderness a year for every day. God, hallelujah, hallelujah. In other words, hallelujah, uh, because they didn't trust God, now they had to wander in their unbelief for the next 40 years. Now also, we would know historically that the generation that started with Moses did not end up with Joshua. In fact, they died in the wilderness. Okay, that's because God doesn't want, yes Lord, the stuff from your wilderness to follow you into your promise. All right, all right. Look, look, look at somebody on your road and tell them you got to let it die. You got to let it die. There's some stuff you got to let go of. There's some schools of thought you got to let go of. There's some old things that you got to let go of. It was good for you in the wilderness, but it ain't going to work for you in the promise. I don't have nobody talking at me. Hallelujah. Look down the road and tell them, let it die. Let it die. Let it die. I feel better here. Let it die. Thank you, Lord. So a whole generation died in the wilderness because of unbelief. Scripture will tell us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so we look here at a principle that I need to raise. Repetition is the penalty of unbelief. I'll say it again. Repetition is the penalty of of unbelief. When you find yourself going through the same vicious cycle in your life, you need to check your faith. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. When you keep going through the same old stuff over and over again, dealing with the same old trauma over and over again, dealing with the same loser people over, I'm sorry, over and over again. Tap your neighbor, tell me you better check yourself. You better check yourself. Doubt and suspicion will delay your promise. I said doubt and delay. Hallelujah and suspicion, it will delay your promise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I came up in the old church and they used to say this, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. There's no question if God said he's going to do it, I don't have to figure out the details. All I've got to do is trust that God is going to do what he said. Lord have mercy. Tell your neighbor, don't worry about the details. Don't worry about the his shot of a host. If God said he's going to do it, then you got to trust that he's going to do it. Because the moment you start doubting God, you're going to 
going to delay what God wants to do in your life. Some of the stuff that you've been praying for, it has not been the devil that held it up. Come on here. It hasn't been the enemy that held it up. The truth of the matter is somewhere along the line, you started to doubt God. And you started to second guess God. But if God said going to heal your body, you got to trust what God said. Tap your neighbor, tell him, trust God, trust God. If God said he's going to bring you through, you got to trust God. First thing, the promise comes with a prerequisite. Yes. Yeah. Comes with a prerequisite. Caleb says to Joshua in their conversation, I followed the Lord God holy. In other words, I followed him with all of my heart. I followed him with everything in me. Follow there in the Hebrew is an interesting phrase. It really means hind part. Hind part. Here's the revelation. What, what Caleb is saying is I followed God so close I didn't allow any distance to get between us. See, what I'm realizing more and more is that I've been called to a generation that does not quite understand consistency. Because if we be honest, consistency is boring. Nobody, nobody wants to talk to you. It's boring. It's boring. It's, it's not exciting to have to do the same thing over and over again. But the scripture would tell us that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek. See, there's some lessons that you learn from God just because you have been faithful over and over again. When you, look, when you look at the parable uh, uh, of the three men that got the different amounts of talents, uh, one thing that stands out is that, is that the ruler or the manager said to the servant, you've been faithful over few things. Now I can make you a ruler over many. See, the problem with this generation, they want to rule, but they don't necessarily want to be faithful. And so there's some things that you got to learn out of diligence. Because diligence is a lifetime word. It ain't something that you just do once or twice. You got to hang in there with it. You got to hold on. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Look at him and tell him, be consistent. Be consistent. See, I can handle, watch this. I can handle if somebody consistently hates me. My problem is when you say you love me. Okay, y'all don't, don't want to talk to me here. When you say you love me, but when you hug me, I can feel the daggers in my back. I'd rather, if you ain't going to talk to me, just don't talk to me. I'm good with it. I'm really okay. It ain't going to hurt my feelings at all. It's just when you're random and you're bouncing all over the place. That's when I have a struggle. Lord, have mercy here. Look at somebody and tell them, just be consistent. Be good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, it's a process that this generation doesn't understand. They are temporary in their thinking. Lord, help me here. Statistics say that most millennials, when they walk on a job, when they get the job, they plan to be there no longer than five years. They go in with the understanding, I'm not going to be here that long. If another opportunity come out, I'm going to that opportunity. Come on here, let's talk. Well, the generation that I'm from, come on here. My parents, they worked on the same job all their lives. Retired and got their watch. Ain't nobody going to talk to me here. Because they were used to being consistent. The problem, the problem is that they heard us complaining about what we were going through. And so they said, I'm not going to live the way my parents live because I didn't hear them complain too much. The problem is we didn't let them know that you're going to have some bad days, but at the same time, you can't give up because you have bad days. Oh, Lord, I need you to prophesy to somebody on your road and tell them you got to hang in there. You got to hang in there. There are some things that you get from God only from holding on in spite of how you feel. You're going to have to do it when you don't always feel it. You're going to have to minister when you don't always feel it. You're going to have to pray when you don't always feel it. You're going to have to praise when you don't always feel it. But when you learn how to be consistent with God, God said, 
says, I follow God. And my brothers didn't trust God like I did. But I trusted God. I trusted that what I saw, we could have. All right, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. So the promise, the promise comes with a prerequisite. We can't hit and miss in this season. I must say, I don't know, you can't hit and miss. Tell somebody, keep your focus, keep your focus. There's a lot of distractions in the church. And if you ain't careful, some of the stuff that you used to be able to ignore will mess around and get your attention in this season. Tap your neighbor and tell them, please keep your focus. Don't. You done came too far to get dumb now. Don't get dumb now. You've been through too much. Keep your okay. All right. There are some things that you're going to have to contend with because you don't want that stuff to crop up at the wrong time. I tell you, one of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to let you move forward in your life and then out of nowhere, something crops up that will mess with your destiny, that will mess with your purpose, something from your past that you ain't even doing no more will grow up in your Lord have mercy will grow up in your face and it will affect yes sir what God is trying to do in your life but I need you to understand please look at your neighbor and tell him you got to kill everything that's messing with your destiny it cannot cohabitate you and it can't live there the stuff koshata that's been holding you back. The stuff uh, that's been hindering your mind. Those things uh, that have been affecting your ministry. You gonna have to get a grip on it. Cause God can bring to bless you. And you can't yes, uh, take that uh, with you uh, to the next level. Uh, somebody open up your mouth. Uh, So now, here, I'm almost there. Mashikaya. The promise, promise, promise comes with a prerequisite. Ain't gonna hit and miss in this season. Demacia, the turnaround is coming to those of us that have maintained. It ain't always been easy. But tell somebody, tell them, I hung in here. I hung in here. I hung in here when it wasn't popular. My seat, tell you. Because anybody can jump on board when everything is moving right. But we need some folks that said, yeah, my see ya. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to stay in place and be everything God called me to be. Oh, Lord have mercy. Come on, look at him and tell him you got to stay in place. See, that, that's what Paul was talking about to Barnabas when they were about to go out to ministry. And Paul said to him, John Mark can't handle this. Uh, Barnabas said, yes, he can. And they argued back and forth. Uh, and Paul said, that if you remember the last time when we were out in ministry, he said, John Mark quit on us. Take it in and tell them no more quitters, no more quitters. This is not the season for folk that are quitting. This is the season for people that say, haven't done all the stand. Yes, sir. I feel better here. Haven't done a whole stand. I don't stand that for. I don't know who I'm preaching to now, but I repute giving up. I repute throwing in the town. I repute compromise. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm going to stay right here. God promised me something. I'm going to hang in here. I don't always feel like it, but I'm going to hold on. Uh, to what God said. Uh, but 
when we get to the to the to the 13th verse, here, here comes Caleb now. And Caleb is looking at Joshua. He said, Now you remember, we were a lot younger when this promise came to us. In other words, my anticipation was that God was going to do it. Yes. Yeah. 